Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're returning to the topic of the Psalms and their meaning. Now, a brief disclaimer before getting into this psalm. The Psalms will be numbered differently in different translations of the Bible. This is a very, very old discrepancy, and to help clear things up, I'll be explaining what number the psalm has in the douay Rheims Bible and in the Revised Standard Version. However, the episodes themselves will list psalm numbers as they're given in the douay Rheims Bible. Sorry if this is confusing. Anyway, this is Psalm 43 in the douay Rheims Bible, but Psalm 44 in the RSV. Unto the end, for the sons of Kor, to give understanding. As with the 41st psalm, the sons of Kor, Korah, are mentioned. They used music to worship God at the command of King David, and this psalm was probably something they would have played music to. We have heard, O God, with our ears. Our fathers have declared to us the work thou hast wrought in their days, and in the days of old. We can combine our knowledge of the work of God in our own lifetimes with testimonies of what he did in previous generations. Thy hand destroyed the Gentiles, and thou plantest them. Thou didst afflict the people, and cast them out. Yes, God did bring about the destruction of some of the non-Israelite people, not by directly causing destruction, but by allowing them to suffer the consequences of their evil doing. But then, he was also the one who put them there to begin with, so they really should have behaved better than they did. The imagery of God afflicting Gentiles and casting them out brings to mind the fate of the Canaanites, who were just horrifying, child-sacrificing demon worshippers, and who ended up being driven out of their land by God, acting partly through his commands to the Israelites. For they got not the possession of the land by their own sword, neither did their own arm save them, but thy right hand and thy arm, and the light of thy countenance, because thou wast pleased with them. Yes, the people of Israel participated in driving out the Canaanites, but they wouldn't have been successful without God. He made the real difference. Thou art thyself my king and my God, who commandest the saving of Jacob. This refers both to the way God saved the life and inheritance of Jacob himself in older times, and also how he saved the people of Israel over and over from their enemies. This is because sometimes, in these old Hebrew texts, a whole group of people will be referred to by the name of their ancestor. So Jacob can also mean all the descendants of Jacob. Through thee we will push down our enemies with the horn, and through thy name we will despise them that rise up against us. Pushing down enemies with a horn brings to mind the falling of the walls of Jericho, and really the willingness to obey God is one of the most important factors in determining good from evil. That's why the name of God would be a dividing line between the Israelites and their enemies. For I will not trust in my bow, neither shall my sword save me. But thou hast saved us from them that afflict us, and hast put them to shame that hate us. Our own strength will never be enough to overcome the odds. We need God to protect and save us, supplying what's necessary for survival. In God shall we glory all the day long, and in thy name we will give praise forever. Apparently hinting that people can praise God even after their deaths. To us this is old news, but in Old Testament times it wasn't very well known. But now thou hast cast us off, and put us to shame, and thou, O God, wilt not go out with our armies. Acknowledgement of the fact that shame and misfortune come from God withdrawing his protection to humble his people, not go out with our armies, implies that God has chosen not to protect the army of his people, allowing them to suffer defeat. Thou hast made us turn our back to our enemies, and they that hated us plundered for themselves. Because we didn't have the protection of God, we ended up looking away at the wrong time, and our enemies took our stuff. Thou hast given us up like sheep to be eaten, Thou hast scattered us among the nations. Thou hast sold thy people for no price, and there was no reckoning in the exchange of them. Thou hast made us a reproach to our neighbors, a scoff and derision to them that are round about us. Thou hast made us a byword among the Gentiles, a shaking of the head among the people. A list of many problems the people of Israel have had, and all of it phrased as though God himself caused it. Now, God isn't the cause of any evil, not even misfortune, at least not intentionally. However, it's not false to say that God caused these things to happen in the same sense that it's not false to say that a huge cliff caused a car wreck. The cliff doesn't cause the car wreck maliciously or because it wants to harm the person driving recklessly on top of it, but just because it's a large cliff and if you approach it the wrong way, you could end up getting hurt. God is like the biggest, tallest cliff ever. 
and if you approach him the right way, you can get an incredible view, which we call the beatific vision, heaven. But if you approach him the wrong way, it's a long, long, long way down. This is how God has made all of these things and many others happen, but without ever proactively doing anything evil or causing any harm voluntarily. All the day long my shame is before me, and the confusion of my face hath covered me, and the voice of him that reproacheth and detracteth me at the face of the enemy and persecutor. Shame and criticisms are constantly on the attack against me, both from within and without. It's so bad I'm visibly disoriented. All these things have come upon us, yet we have not forgotten thee, and we have not done wickedly in thy covenant, and our heart hath not turned back, neither hast thou turned aside our steps from thy way. Even though terrible things are happening to us right now, we're still committed to doing right by God and obeying his commandments, because the most important thing is that God is the only one we can turn to to save us. For thou hast humbled us in the place of affliction, and the shadow of death hath covered us. Times are terrible, and things seem to be at their worst, but it's all meant to humble us and drive us closer to God. If we have forgotten the name of our God, and if we have spread forth our hands to a strange God, shall not God search out these things? For he knoweth the secrets of the heart. We are well aware that any action of unfaithfulness or forgetfulness about God will be found out by him. In fact, he knew about our sins before we even committed them. Keeping secrets from God is a fool's errand. Because for thy sake we are killed all the day long, we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Lots of people die because God didn't step in and prevent it. However, there are worse things than an earthly death. Sometimes God will allow a good person to die for the purpose of saving many more people later on. In fact, what is the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross if not that? Arise, why sleepest thou, O Lord? Arise, and cast us not off to the end. Why turnest thou thy face away, and forgettest our want and our trouble? For our soul is humbled down to the dust, our belly cleaveth to the earth. Arise, O Lord, help us, and redeem us for thy name's sake. Finally, we testify that we've been seriously humbled and implore God to assist us in our troubles. The imagery used here of sleepest, turnest thou thy face away, and forgettest our want and our trouble, are all ways of asking God if he will continue to leave us in our misery and not take action to bring about our victory. So in the end, we have here a psalm that pleads with God for miraculous intervention while describing in many different terms the many awful experiences that come about when God doesn't intervene on people's behalf. However, there's also an indication that the writer of this psalm understands at least part of why God might allow such misfortunes to befall his people at times, even if the full picture isn't quite there yet. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.